Sea turtles have a really interesting fossil history, and that's in part because we actually have a lot of their fossils coming from North America during the Cretaceous. The thing is though, these sea turtles from the Cretaceous aren't at all related to modern day sea turtles. Instead, these oceanic ones from the Cretaceous all died out the same time the non-avian dinosaurs did, because a giant rock from the sky has a lot of implications for the environment. And the thing is, we found a few other sea turtles from other places around the world. For example, there's a few relatively small ones at about 1.5 meters or around 5 feet coming from Europe. Meanwhile, in North America, you have things like Archelon, which could get as long as 11 feet or over 3 meters and approaching 4 meters. For comparison, the largest sea turtle today is about 2 meters being the leatherback sea turtle. So all the European ones seemed a little bit smaller than our largest modern day sea turtle. And the reason I say seemed is because now there's a new one coming from Europe that shows, no, there were really big turtles over there too. Leviathan O'Kelly's Enigmatica is the new Lake Cretaceous sea turtle coming from Spain. And it wasn't quite as big as Archelon, but it was larger than our modern day leatherback sea turtle. Specifically, they estimate it could get up to about 3.5 meters. So it's definitely in competition for the largest sea turtle ever, being pretty close to some of the larger specimens of Archelon, just the largest specimen of Archelon is even bigger than that. This is really nice because it really helps to show that there were some distinct lineages of turtles that did actually get pretty large in other parts of the world. For example, I already mentioned Archelon coming from North America, but even large freshwater turtles are better known from South America than from Europe or other parts of the world, specifically with Stupendemis. Now there's still gonna need to be more research on this animal because unlike Archelon for which we have fantastic fossils, Leviathan ochellus really doesn't have great fossils. There's some parts of the pelvic girdle and some parts of the shell which help us to understand how big it could have gotten, but again, they're really incomplete. The nice thing is though, that with some of those shell pieces, there are some vertebra associated and those associations help to suggest, yeah, no, it really is its own species. It's not just another specimen of Archelon. And in fact, based on those features, they do find it to be more closely related to other European sea turtles rather than Archelon, meaning that there were two distinct lineages in the Cretaceous that just reached massive sizes for a turtle. This also means we can potentially understand some of the traits that may have led to giant turtles, potentially find them elsewhere in the fossil record, but also understand maybe the evolution of leatherback sea turtles, because leatherback sea turtles are by a good margin the largest sea turtles today. And unfortunately they're pretty rare because they live in the middle of the ocean, far away from people, which good for them, but also means it's really hard to study them. So hopefully this will help lead to more advances in turtle science in the future.